Greeting Earthlings! If you follow the channel, you know that we recently paid a visit to Steve Jurvetson's Amazing Space Collection. We got our heads spinning with so many incredible artifacts. The Apollo main couches, the mocker console, the fuel cells, the Soyuz panel and so on and so forth that we covered in the previous episode. But the collection has also quite a number of rocket engines, from the really small to the really big. Unfortunately, I know relatively little about the rocket engines, which is probably a good thing, or I would be tempted to start them up again. But while we were there, this guy showed up through the door. The space enthusiast among you will have recognized Tim Dodd from the popular and oh so awesome Everyday Astronaut channel. Tim explains all things space with clarity and depth. He hardly had come through the door that he got attracted to this giant thing, a complete RL-10 engine. This amazing engine, first flown in 1963 on the Atlas rocket, is still used today and will be flying in the SLS in the near future. To my uneducated eye, when I see a rocket engine, I see a big bell nozzle and lots of tubes interconnected at random. Actually, I see a goat. Because, you see, the plumbing in a rocket engine was clearly inspired by the interconnections of the digestive system of herbivores. See, it's obviously similar. Engine, goat, engine, goat. Same concept, one powered by grass and the other by oxygen and hydrogen, which produces far bigger farts. And of course, Tim wanted to figure out the digestive system of this engine. So both yeah. of these are hydrogen. These are the gimbal now. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So, so say again how, how, the, how this oh, yeah. flows. So what have we figured out? Okay, okay. so from, and I'm not by any means, uh, I'm just, no, you're the resident expert now. Just oh, gonna God. take the mantle. No, no, no. Take the mantle. What we need to do is get this we need to get Scott Manley over here. He'll he'll whip us into shape. Okay. And as Tim rightly points out, oh, Scott gone. Manley has a whole episode on expander cycle engines, which includes the famous RL10, which we should have watched beforehand, but we had not. However, you probably should. So let's imagine you have not watched Scott Manley's video. How much can you figure out by just staring at the rocket engine? So far, I had obviously figured out the bell cooling tubes and the injector plate visible in the combustion chamber right in the middle here. Okay, so from... So we know hydrogen is going through these pipes. We know hydrogen, hydrogen. yes, definitely. Like because point. this is the hydrogen pump here. So we're coming off here. So yeah, mm -hmm. at some point, it, I gotta figure out even where it gets, it, how it first gets into here in the first place. Because this is what's confusing with it being uh, uh, expander is so is it the hydrogen is cooling the bell? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Key yeah. point. Yeah. The liquid yeah. hydrogen. Get a look at this. When this is so at full thrust, it's hotter than the sun, right in here, and icicles so cools, simultaneously right. form on the lip at the same time. So, but so so the hydrogen first goes through the bell. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, they, through where? From, through so, each of these pipes. So from here. It gets, this is the hydrogen. I believe this is the hydrogen in the pipe. This is okay. the oxygen in the pipe. Okay. And then. Right yeah, it gets driven through there, through the, sh well, because it, it, it either goes, oh god. I'm trying to yeah, it goes, it goes here. Yeah, right, right. yep. So it goes here, goes there. Oh, that's why there's two. Why? One's two. in one's out, in one's in out input, because it, after it flows through the chamber. Well, because the whole chamber. It has to go through the pump, back into the pump. So wait, is this, maybe I was wrong on this one or two months, is this a separate circuit? driving it's additional lines? Nope, it's the same. So it's going to only drive these tubes, half of it. You know, right, it splits but it's, two but to one. In other words, one set of hydrogen comes in up here, the other set comes in here? No. no. One so mm. yep. this, this goes into the bell, up there it comes out and goes to the second turbo pump and then it goes back to actually combust. That, well, then I don't know if it even has to go back. It never goes back. It'll well, just it, go I mean, back in the chamber. It, it, it actually goes, goes, it goes into combust. At, at the very end of its journey, it burns. Yes. Mm. We yes. know where it ends up. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm trying to figure out still though is where's the oxygen? It's oxygen's here. Mm -hmm. Simple. Oxygen, okay. oxygen in and up to the top. Okay. Nothing and that's it. So just one it. pass through the <laughs> pumps. Little tiny guy. Um, so is there so much more going on in the hydrogen because of the circuitous route? Mostly because it's so undense. Okay. It's so sparse. 
that it requires substantially more multiple stages and a much just larger more pump. sparse in the gas phase or yeah in, both right. okay liquid both. too yep right. yeah so they burn like a six to one ish ratio mm -hmm. uh liquid hydrogen to liquid oxygen uh one being um one being hydrogen and six oxygen hmm. um which is opposite from most fuels and um or from like methyl ox and an rp1 but so i'm still trying to <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out though one of these is is what has to drive and normally it, it should be coming right in would be what do you going think after it heats up the bigger pipe would be it coming out the bell having been heated up and it's now more gas and the thinner ones maybe the feed just because that very well could be answer this one is going this way and this mm. one is going this way out right coming coming out of the bell because one, one goes into the bell and one leaves the bell that's right i think this oh. one goes through the bell comes up gets collected it's out also here it's also the bigger gas. which is interesting yeah. it's expanded i wonder if the size the fact that it's bigger is so see that it goes into here to the gas yeah. and then so that's that, where the final and then this is the very end where it goes in the and notice it's the thickness of the pipe see that again which one goes in and which one goes on the diameter rather yeah because it must or might be actually this could be part of the throttle i believe it or not like a fixed throttle mm. orifice so you know it will never exceed a certain pressure or, or it could be a deep lavelle nozzle actually now that i think about it it's more likely hold on this might be where the, this might be the actual expander part where it's taking the hot gas from here accelerating it's supersonic awesome. going from high pressure through a deep lavelle nozzle spinning this pump uh, that pump drives oh, both it, liquid oxygen and the this makes sense then the the inlet comes in here okay okay so that's your whole beauty right there yeah here's your first stage is that out. labeled anywhere I, I gotta know now i gotta know um, <laughs> oh. and so the, the, what is the say this one time what the effect of this so this is basically it's a mini rocket nozzle this is going to be the same thing as the throat of the engine uh -huh. where it's it's going to be high pressure here uh -huh. they choke the flow which mm -hmm. is going to get it up to supersonic speeds and then they expand the flow again, just like just like any thruster you mm -hmm. see around here at all. So it's a D Lavelle nozzle. And so what it, what it's doing here is exchanging high pressure for higher velocity. So they, they do this in order to jack up the velocity to be able to spin the pumps. Ah, right before the spin pump. Right before spinning the pumps. I think. Now again, total I am genuinely an amateur. But I I that seems that seems plausible. Yeah, here's a diagram of the RL10 engine I looked up last time I was here, so okay. hopefully that will help. Okay, so it, it comes from the bell, heats up, heats up, heats up, heats up, heats up, heats up. It's collected it all manual. the way here, so all these little tubes, they yes. make it all the way so up. You can actually see it almost right here, this is a version of it right here, you know, you can see how this manifold interfaces with these individual tubes. Yeah, this is feeding down. Yep. Exactly. And then they come up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're, 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 they're for the 2 2 one. So, so it's coming in this here. Super cold. Yes. So the hydrogen comes in mid bell through half of these little tubes and goes downwards. At the end of the bell, the tubes do a U turn and come back up all the way to the top of the bell, then further up all the way to the top of the combustion chamber to keep the outside of the, of the chamber cool, as you can see here. Yeah, we're definitely right that the bottom tube is... Okay. The ring to which this fat pipe is connected collects the hydrogen from the tubes. It is now heated up and transformed into a gas at very high pressure. This is what will drive the turbo pump. Is the... after it's been run through everything. Alright. So this is what spins. We're now looking at the inlet to the right and the outlet down and going to the left for the turbine that is at the bottom of the turbo pump and spins the whole thing. Is this where it comes in? Oh, yeah. it comes so the spin is twice as the here, final. Here, right? The absolute right. final journey is going this way. Yeah. Yes. The very bottom of this big old fat guy is what's going to go. There's going to be a vent at the end of this, and that goes into. That goes right? Is there, a big, is there a vent somewhere? Yeah, well, there's. Yeah. 
yeah. This guy. Yeah, here's the best. Yep. This one. And with the mixture zero. ratio adjustment. Yeah. So it goes into the combustion. The, the top ring is to the combustion sem set, uh, This is to the combustion chamber, right? Yes. So the top of the combustion chamber is right about here, and that's going to be your injector. Which plate. makes sense. Which has just physically with these tubes. Mm -hmm. Yep. The inner one would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so we're definitely right. This is the final output here. So the does belt. does all the hydrogen go through the belt? Um, that's a good question. Because it looks maybe, like like it's right, only maybe it part of it. It might only be part well, of it. But this it, this is still super dense compared to. But once so, it's so been does it up. get split in two? Mm -hmm. One here that goes through the belt, and one that goes yeah, straight well, over through. here. Nope, doesn't get split. All the hydrogen goes through the pump, is forced into the bell, expands to drive the turbine of the pump then goes into the combustion chamber. Oh, see, so this is stage one, stage two. Yep, and exactly, then it's gonna start staging from there, so. And output is, but then oh, output would be here. That's mm. It's also driving the oxygen. This is an oxygen. Oh, so, oh sorry, so, so then so output is, is down there. Is, 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 oh, is this like mechanical? Is there like, like gears between sure. these? Sure. Sure. Oh, that's like that. Yeah, isn't that awesome? <laughs> Which is, totally makes sense. And your oxidizer and fuel inlets are correct, and it's follow those lines. And you think about the oxidizer discharge pressure. So this is a gearbox, basically. Yeah, 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 so it's actually a gear driving. Zero the oxidizer, the oxidizer is hilariously simple. Yeah, oxidizer in, and like then tube like going to the purge check valve. We should purge see that. Purge check valve should. Like I mean, it doesn't say purge check valve, but, but maybe major, maybe even up here. Ratio adjustment. adjustment. Well, this yeah. is a discharge, cool down and pressure relief valve. That's oh. Well, the mission issue is, is the locks the hydrogen. So there's but that's on the hydrogen locks. line. I don't know if this is a choke valve or what. That you can adjust the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That would totally make sense. So, okay, so one so thing about the gearbox so is that you have to make sure the seal, because, because you have the I'm same sure gearbox all for all both the oxygen and and hydrogen, you have to make sure your seals are really good. Oh yeah, or else the hydrogen and oxygen mix. Oh, that would be bad. So, you know, so, sometimes they'll have like two separate turbo pumps, so then you don't have to worry about yeah. the, the seals. Physical. And there you go, with the help of the everyday astronaut, an everyday bunch of retro electronicians can figure out an RL-10 rocket engine plumbing. Kinda sorta. We could also have watched the vintage Pratt & Whitney video from the 1960s and gotten the explanation that you will now follow with ease. The engine itself is as simple as the diagram. To demonstrate, hydrogen enters at this point, flows through the first stage pump, into the second stage pump, passes through the cooling jacket manifold, down through half the tubes, to the turnaround manifold, up the long tubes, collected at the exit manifold, through the venturi into the turbine, There it provides the power to drive the hydrogen and oxygen pumps. Then around the large line, through the main fuel shutoff valve, into the injector, and then to the combustion chamber. On the oxygen side, oxygen flows through the inlet valve through a single stage pump, directly through the mixture ratio control valve into the injector. Now really, go see the Scott Manley video. See you in the next episode. Arriving at one of the vertical test stands, the RL-10 is installed and made ready for one, test firing. Three, two, one, is good. One, shell is good. Zero. On completion of this test firing, the engine will be returned to the manufacturing area for complete disassembly, inspection and reassembly.